finally, it is time to head out here for a hunt on Leighton Lakes, which of course received the backfilling of Merriam's Turkey with the New England Mountains update just a couple of weeks ago. So I'm really excited to see where we may encounter those today. And I'm just looking forward to hunt on what has always been my favorite map. And there's our first look at turkeys on Leighton Lakes feeding back in there. If not for the warning call, I don't think I ever would have found them. What's interesting though is, there must be another gobbler. Almost makes me think that it could be a little bit better sized just because that one's completely oblivious. We'll make sure we get eyes on whatever's over in here before we do any shooting. That is the one right there. The question is, can we get it to spot? Actually, it's the same size, but we'll try to get both. We do have the AR-22 today, so potentially that can help us a little bit just because I think we'll get a touch less recoil. The problem is, our other gobbler, I guess, walked away. Well, that's a little unfortunate, but they just fit right in. I feel like most species that they've done the backfilling with do fit in really well. I mean, pronghorn on Rancho just work. I think the turkeys here are probably next on the list, and, and maybe pheasants in some of the fields on those maps. Medved's not too bad either, I guess, with the, the wolves. Caper Kaylee feel clunky to me. I think the javelina on Parquet, I don't know enough about the game species there, but that one just didn't seem to fit as well. I don't think there's going to be a lot of situations where you hear a turkey warning call or, or mating call on Leighton and have like a what is that doing here type of feeling. I think they're going to fit right in, but 4.19 left lung at 137 meters. And we'll keep going here. This is the Balmont Railroad region, which was the one spot that was pointed out to me on stream probably a couple weeks ago by now by someone who had been hunting the map and specifically was encountering them here. So I didn't know to go to this spot, but the rest of the map, it'll be completely kind of unknown territory. You know, speaking of changes to Leighton, we do get to see the new whitetail models here as well. I just, it's so good to see them. The way they look now compared to what they used to be. I just really think they did a good job, but we actually have for them today, the 6.5. I used the Leighton Bar Camo just to pick something specifically from Leighton. And while it's not the best whitetail gun, it's going to get the job done and take him down. That'll be our second kill then. And we're kind of working our way through our slightly different than normal loadout. The buck itself is not going to be all that special. Just a 156 scoring silver. Just kind of barely got the left lung at 200 meters. We also nearly managed to hit the heart as well. But we've now seen the 6.5 in this loadout, which by the way... I so wish we could see better, because I actually kind of think it looks neat. Then of course we have the 22. As for our other two weapons, the 243 rifle, which we really don't carry that much anymore after the 243 handgun came out, and we have the caplock muzzleloader. More on that later. I think maybe in this case, even though it's a rather long shot, we might try the caplock for this max wood estimate bug. Looking like 270 meters, so I have to aim a little bit high. But I think because we can zero to 200, it should be doable. We go right above the spine, and that actually dropped him in his tracks. And the reason that I chose the cap lock today is because of the release of the inline muzzleloader with the New England Mountains map, and just how much better the cap lock is for seemingly no real reason. I don't quite understand why they wouldn't at least have the same stats. Like the cap lock, if not for the classes being 4-8, would be a very viable weapon for even Cape Buffalo and Water Buffalo. It's insanely powerful. The inline, on the other hand, isn't even that good on class 8. So we're carrying this weapon today pretty much just to draw attention to the fact that there's just a major disparity between two weapons that really, if anything, should probably be reversed the other way around. And even if they were just balanced out, I wouldn't even mind if the cap lock was made less powerful to kind of be on the same level as the inline. It's just, to me, it makes very little sense for it to be how it is. And I had intended to try to find like a moose or an elk or something to take, but we're just stumbling into whitetail after whitetail, two golds in a row there. Maybe the cap lock will bring us good luck. 
You know, I get asked all the time still if Layton is still my favorite map. And in case you haven't heard the answer, it is indeed still my favorite map, but it's, it's crazy to see the changes to it. And I think the last time we were out here, we talked about this a little bit. In a lot of ways, it feels like a brand new map. And frankly, turkeys being added have probably the least effect on that as some things like this. Just the amount of whitetail in Balmont alone is so much different than it used to be. And there's so much more than that as we have another gold whitetail here. I mean, whether it's the elk being in Balmont, you've got the blacktail being basically nowhere near Balmont now, and them drinking in the evening really starts to make it feel like they're not even on the map anymore. It's just very, very different than it was in the beginning. And I kind of think that's good. It makes exploring a map like this that is almost six years old now still enjoyable all these years later. At some stage though, hopefully, we can actually find something else. That's just a cool looking buck though. Really tall tines. I think that is a 230s rack, even though his max estimate's 238. He should kind of turn back our way. And maybe, as he pauses there, we can, oh goodness. Did we have to take that shot the <laughs> moment we did? If we waited a half a second, that thing was gonna step out. Well, I guess we're gonna sit here and wait even longer because it looked like they were on their way back. Typically, that's what happens. And again, a little more patience there probably would have been a good thing. But if you see animals go nervous and try to return to their zone, usually if they do it once, they'll do it again. I would though, kind of like if we could see him, I don't know where he went. That's our guy there. I've only seen two deer come back. The doe and then him. No complaints. We'll try to get into position to make the shot, but I kind of wonder if there were two separate herds. And maybe we're getting lucky with the one that is returning. I gotta assume he was with that other buck we shot. I'm gonna try to get him to slow down. That is about as perfect as we could ask for. And there is... A Late Lake Bar Camo 6.5 heart shot on a whitetail deer, which actually I believe was a guaranteed diamond. I never even looked at the score estimate that close. Was it 257 to 3 something? It's the small rack, my goodness. I don't know, the grass was high enough to do that, but he's probably at best like a 258, 259. But taking him with the camouflage pattern that comes with this map kind of makes it a little bit extra special. Again, I'd love if there was some kind of thing where the gun that you used actually showed in the harvest screen. 258.7 for him. Heart shot at 50 meters. Right in the top of the heart, too. Not a bad deal. So that kind of works out well because we had the one on the New England Mountains in early access. I don't remember the score, but it was similar. And that one we, of course, were unable to keep because that progress did not count. So we'll tax that for sure. I think that's like our first official new model diamond whitetail. I don't recall shooting any others anyway. I do have to say, though, I kind of think this other buck had a cooler rack. It's not one that I haven't seen before, but it was especially tall, I think. I'm not even sure exactly what it was, but it looked a little bit different than what this rack, which I believe is the, like, 236 usually scoring rack would be, is somewhere right around that 230s almost all the time, and a max 238 probably says he'll be there again, 238.57, I just, I like it. The shape and the really tall tines, it looks nice, I'd still, we talk about this all the time so I won't ramble on it too much, but I'd still love if there were less 8x8 frames, because it's, that's a lot for a whitetail. But that particular one didn't look too bad. Now we're getting a little somewhere. I was just thinking, like at some stage, we're supposed to kill more than one turkey today. Hit him on that second shot. So that'll be our second and definitely biggest. We had a bit of a change of plans because, and naturally, if we find some whitetail, but all we've basically done today is shoot whitetail. So we've changed the moose drink time. And I'm recording this video way ahead of time. So... I have no idea what may be going on in the moose grind by now, but provided that we haven't gotten a moose great one, 
this could be a little bit of a test to see if we maybe want to shift our grind to Leighton instead someday. Hopefully we can stick with Medved and, I mean, heck, hopefully by now we actually have it. But it's something I want to keep in mind. I really, maybe it's because we've been doing a lot of different grinds and stuff lately, but something hit me coming out here to Leighton today and kind of missing doing the old Great One Whitetail grind, so it could happen. We almost had a diamond turkey there. I thought it was 4.64. Maybe that's Caper Kaylee. 4.62 is the requirement for Merriam Turkey, regardless. Over 10 kilo. Not too bad. Got him at 84 meters with the 22. And now, hopefully, we can find, well, anything but whitetail, but ideally moose. I do not find this likely, but we can attempt to get that level 3 mallard. Honestly, it'd be better if they kept on flying in a straight line. They probably will when we spook them by shooting. And I'd really kind of prefer to have the Vibrant right now. Having the 10 ra Never mind. Who needs 10 rounds? 5 will do the job. What a day! Level 3 Whitetail. One little break in between for a turkey. Now I have a level 3 Mallard. So, there's so many duck species in the game at this point that it's less of a big deal. But I had always wanted to get a max score of every duck. And at the time, there were only three. There were Harlequin, Cinnamon Teal, and the Mallard. We had the first two. Cinnamon Teal and Harlequin Duck never quite got a max score Mallard. We had a max weight one that was, I think, 0.2 below max score. Of the 21, this guy technically has the chance. I think it's probably a common. I can't really tell. 20.01, so it would going need to be almost a full point higher to be max score, but not bad. Any over 20 are decent. And that'll be two diamonds with two kind of underused weapons for the day. We have the 6.5. Taking a diamond whitetail, and now the 22 taking a diamond mallard, but not the normal 22, the 22 AR today. So finally, we've got a moose, and we're 30 meters away. It's taken a long time just to find one, but I don't think we need the 200 meter zero range on this guy. Try to place that in the heart. Not a bad deal. I would like to get a broadside shot on one just to kind of compare properly with the inline and what we've seen. And I could bring the inline today and shoot moose kind of back and forth between the two, but I think it's quite clear that the cap lock is just better. I still though want to get that double lung shot just to see the difference based on what we saw on New England not too long ago. And while it may not be the biggest one, I think that'll work. So what I would expect to see happen here, and we're gonna intentionally avoid the heart, is probably a Let's go with 100% quick kill. I'm pretty sure we can do that at that range with the cap lock. Should be double lung. And we'll just watch the health drop. It's going to be right around there. 8 seconds is the number to get them down and to achieve 100%. I feel like we were probably upwards of 6, but I think probably under 8. And it's not all that often we're worried about quick kill in 2022 Call of the Wild. It's going to be 2023 Call of the Wild. And actually, we were just under 90%. Performed a little worse than I would have expected, but you can see, and this is the important part, again, in modern Call of the Wild, through both lungs easily, and from almost any angle, if we had the shot aimed properly, it could hit the lung almost regardless of what we had. As for the assessment of Leighton and whether or not it would be a good moose grinding map, I think it could be. But you do run into a lot of the same issues that we always saw when chasing a whitetail, and that is just the pure amount of water that you have to try to cover to get to all the potential drink zones. And while a lot of good grinding maps are like that, be it Medved Taiga or Reventuli Coast, Leighton is kind of especially so, because it's just these long expanses of potential drink zones. And I don't know, we'll see. I think if Medved gets to a point where it's just not happening after, you know, Black Bear numbers, four or 5,000 kills, we'll consider switching, but I don't see it as so much better than Medved that we need to switch anytime soon. But I do think this guy will be our last harvest of the day. We actually only single lunged him at 233. The angle was a little bit tougher, almost an accidental hard shot, a little bit lower, and it probably would have been, but a 187 score. And we do now have 
a diamond whitetail and a diamond mallard to bring back to the trophy lodge. I think both are going to end up being second lodge additions, but always good to see a couple of diamonds. So not long ago, we got to add a piebald green wing teal to the second lodge. And now right beside it, we've got a diamond mallard. I really do like that some of these even small plaques in this lodge have begun to fill up. And we also took down a diamond merriam's turkey, fitting because they are the one species we kind of met the target on late and then only killed two. But I just, I cannot get over how much better these models look. It just, it makes such a difference to walk past something like that and really get that impression that it's a real buck. I just think they've done such a fantastic job and always cool to see it with the diamond rack. And I'm still looking forward to seeing the big rack. We've only seen the smallest possible diamond rack in this one and now the early access one on New England Mountains as well. So hopefully we'll get one of those sooner rather than later, but I suppose that remains to be seen. As for this video, that is pretty much going to do it. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.